I know you love biker chicks, so I got another one for you today. Hailing from Yonkers, New York, a longtime member of the Forsaken MC, a nightclub owner, and I'm talking about Shells, the biker chick, and we get into it on this episode of Demon's Row TV. And oh yeah, we ghosting, baby. Big shout to the ghosts and the ghost sets. Welcome to Demons Row TV, the holy grail of MC culture, where we cover everything motorcycle and motorcycle club involved. I'm Sos the Ghost. I'm your host for the evening. I know you guys love the biker chick, so we're going to get into it right away. But real quick, if you want to support the role, get your Ghost of Ellie mask now. They're on www.demonsroad.com and let's get into it shells thank you for sitting down with me thank you for having me so i'm i was so interested to sit down with you having your own spot the way you run your own business it's inspiring and i you know women could look up to you like younger girls could look up to what you're doing you know standing on your own it's not easy so tell me how it started where did you get this drive from where did you grow up so i'm from yonkers and um i've been bartending for like years and years and years i was just like you know what i need to get my own spot what really really pushed me to get my own spot is i was working for somebody and i felt like they were like disrespectful mm -hmm. and that was like the last job for me and i was just like you know what i'm done working for anybody anymore uh, i would say uh, the next week i was signed i didn't sign my lease got my keys everything and i said i'm never going back I i'm never that. going back bar and working for anybody I had a similar situation. I was working in a hospital and there was this chick, I don't want to blow up, but everybody hated her. Mm -hmm. And when I came in, they used to be like, yo, I'm so happy you're here. This chick made three times what I made. Oh, wow. The day that I heard what her salary was, I was like, yo, I'm out of here. Like, I can't work for nobody. No, some more. people just miserable, you know, yeah. no matter how much money they make or what's their status in life. Some people just miserable. You know, so. so so what was it like growing up in Yonkers? Oh, growing up in Yonkers was so crazy. <laughs> I went to Roosevelt High School in Yonkers, graduated from there. Then I went to VSU. Uh, from VSU, I went to NYU to get my master's. I'm nice. um, a mental health therapist. Oh, I have my master's at social work. Um, but Yonkers is crazy. You know, it's just it's a jungle out here. I'm gonna tell you a funny story about mm -hmm. Getty Square. Okay, I remember. Um, we got in trouble around my neighborhood, around Gun Hill, mm -hmm. and the cops grabbed us up. And they're like, yo, we should throw you in Getty Square and leave you over there. Oh, we yeah. were like, what is that? And they, they were like, Yonkers, and we're laughing. We're like, ah, Yonkers, you know, we're from the Bronx. Yonkers police at the what? Years later, mm -hmm. I went to Getty Square. Okay. There was a hundred people on this block, uh -huh. hundred people here. If he would have oh, left yeah. us there, we would have died. <laughs> people don't know Yonkers is Yonkers the real is deal. The real deal, for real. I think people kind of just, when they hear Yonkers, like people that's not familiar with Yonkers, that gets like like somewhere far upstate. And that's really not in the case. Because yeah. you could be in certain places in Yonkers and literally walk over to the Bronx. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And yeah. You could be literally some places in Yonkers. Mount Vernon is right there. New Rochelle is right there. It's, little, it's close to everything. Did you used to go to the Westchester County Fair? I did. I, I did. That spot. Um, that yeah, some really good times there. My friends, family, and stuff like that. Westchester County Fair was dope. So tell me how you got into the to the motorcycle okay. culture. Oh. That's a good question. So my father, he um, he was a part of the Black Falcons um, club in the Bronx, and so I used to always see him on his bikes. Ride him with his friends and stuff like that. And I always said, when I get older, I want to ride bikes. So I started off doing like uh, riding dirt bikes and four wheelers and stuff like that in the backyard. And, um, or I'm not in the backyard, in the street. Uh, my father taught me how to ride. That's where I got it from. Then my brothers, I'm the only girl, I have five brothers. So I grew up kind of tomboyish. Yeah. And um, so all my Can't brothers rode. Right now, but... Thank you. <laughs> all my brothers rode. I started riding dirt bikes, and I just say, you know what? I'm gonna get me a bike, and I've been riding bikes for about ten years now. Wow. Yeah. So were your brothers like they're the ones that got you onto the bikes and all that? You said your father. My father. Then... Well, seeing him riding his bike kind of just 
inspired me to just want to get bikes. Um, and then my brothers too, same thing. I, I would say they were inspired for my father as well. So were they in clubs? Is that how you got into the club? Uh, no. The the crazy thing is my first bike that I got was a Canon Spider, the trike. And I rode that for maybe like a month or two. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't want this no more. So then I got a, a Kawasaki, a three, a three, I'm, I'm sorry, a 636. And I had um, seen one of my homeboys and he kind of like was like, oh, I didn't know you ride and, you know, come through, come join Forsaken. And that's how I got into Forsaken um, through him. Shout out to Frenchie. That's my best friend now. So Frenchie got me into Forsaken and I was in Forsaken for about seven years and um, ended up leaving politics and everything like that. I just wasn't happy, but I started my business and everything. So it was just time for me to fall back. Um, so you had the business at the same time while you were in the yeah, club? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what was it like, you know, like prospecting for Forsaken? Like, what was that for you um, with the mentality that you have the boss mentality? Prospecting was easy. Like, I didn't have to do anything crazy or anything like that. Um, my prospecting phase lasted a little longer because of my attitude. <laughs> <laughs> and at the time, uh, Frenchie was the president. Yeah. And I will always keep asking, when are you going to give me my colors? When are you going to give me? I'm tired of being a prospect. And every time I asked, he would prolong it. Yeah. So I was literally prospecting for about a year, like four months, when it only supposed to have been six months. Oh. Uh, but because of my attitude, which humbled me, yeah, I had to wait. You just brought yeah, up something decide. important mm -hmm. that I never taught people, and that's a very key thing. When you're a prospect, you're never supposed to no. ask when you get fully patched. Mm -hmm. I never brought that up on no. Name is Wrong. You're not. You're that's not. And I just kept that. asking and asking, and he kept tagging on another month, another month, another month. That's what landed me so long, my prospect phase. So were you like taking the tour and going to like all different events and stuff oh, like that with yeah. Forsaken? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, that's one thing with the former president, Frenchie, you had to be outside. He wants you a part of the club. Yeah. Um, one thing about him, I salute him as um, when he was president because monkey see, monkey do. Um, he didn't ask you to do something that he didn't do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So if he's telling you to come, come to an event, he was there. So what was that dynamic like being in a club where it's co-ed? Is it a lot of drama, like with um, relationships, people dating, falling out? Oh, that yeah, type of stuff? things like that happen. It didn't happen for me. Um, I'm not interested in dating any bikers in any bike clubs. Um, so you never dated no. anybody in your club or in another club? Nope. Never. Never. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Bikers just don't do it for you? No, you know, the bike community is so small, I yeah. feel. And the things that I've seen, you know, guys talk and they, I feel like some of the guys are more cattier than the females. Yeah. I call yeah. them, I call them whole ass niggas. That's what I call them. Um, so that just kind of just turned me off. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I'm not interested. With the club, did you do a lot of like out of state stuff or was it more like in the five boroughs? Oh, yeah, we definitely did a lot of things out of state. Um, I've been to, Events in Delaware, Virginia, Boston. We have a Boston. Well, Forsaken has a Boston chapter. Mm -hmm. um, so plenty of rides up there. Um, Philly, North Carolina, South Carolina. So we've been around, you know. So we did the interview with Bad News here. Mm -hmm. We had chosen a few here. You you were um, cool with uh, TG. Yeah. Like you got a lot of respect from a lot of the big clubs. Mm -hmm. Like where did that come from? Was it Forsaken or was it after that? Or I would definitely give props to Forsaken. Um, because I've definitely, that kind of brought in, you know, my horizons to the, actually the bike club, learning so much, meeting new people. Um, and then credit to myself, cause I'm a sociable person, you know, yeah. and I like to go out to events. I like to ride my bike. I want to meet new people. Um, so yeah, let's say, and a lot of the guys that I've known already, like, uh, my homeboy Gunna, he's part of TG. He was just in here the other day. So I'm meeting new TG, um, people and members and stuff like that so it's 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 dope it is bike life is life i love bikes i love the atmosphere and being in the events going out of town meeting new people so i enjoy all of it one thing i notice about you like you you're not dating any of these people usually you know females have a relationship with club members because of somebody they dated or whatever yeah how do you navigate that because some of these young girls can learn from you like how do you navigate being cool with certain people but not having to be in a relationship with them um, you know well again like i said i have five brothers so 
I guess that's a, just a learned trait, you know, and just kind of stay away. Like you're in, you're, like you're there, but you're not there. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like not every man you have to smile in his face and show your teeth to, you know what I mean? Yeah. But um, also be respectful and, you know, introduce yourself and just kind of be stern about, you know, what it is that, that you expect. Yeah. That's all. So tell me about being a, a club owner and what you're doing or a lounge. How, what's the proper way to Okay, so say it? Um, this is an event space. Okay. And so basically I have events like every night and we have lots of fun and people book the event space as well. Um, I had uh, bridal showers, bachelor parties, um, baby showers. Uh, people come here just to do a photo shoot. Um, so I'm kind of open to all different types of events. So being for Yonkers, what made you land out here in New Rochelle? Oh, Yonkers, nothing lasts in Yonkers. If you're a club owner, event space owner, it ain't happening. It's yeah. gonna get shut down. People are Wilding out. gonna get it <laughs> shut down. And also it kind of, it takes me away, although I'm not too far, but it takes me away from my peers, right? I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, I know her. So, you know, I'm, oh, yeah. I'm coming in and like, you know, get call shells, get shells. And sometimes I go through that here. But not as much as I feel that I would go through it if it's in Yonkers. Yeah. That makes sense. You know what I mean? So do you get a lot of Yonkers people coming here because they know? Oh, you? not really. Oh. Not really. So what is it like navigating, you know, because you're doing this every day. That's yeah, a lot. yeah, it's a lot of work, um, but I'm doing it like tomorrow is my one year anniversary, June 2nd. Um, I'm happy about that. I'm it sure. was a lot. It was a lot. There was times I just wanted to just snatch my wig off. I'm like, how am I going to do this? But um, God has had a plan for me, and then I'm just executing it. So where do you want to take it to with this? Are you trying to get more spots? Are you oh, trying yeah. to make this a bigger yeah, spot? Yeah, so um, my plan is to not only just have this spot, it's to get another big, a, a bigger spot, um, another one. And they're just going to franchise this whole brand. Nice. Yeah. So what's the what's the the marketing strategy? What's the brand name that the people know? All right, so my legal name is Touched by Shells Event. Since I've gotten here, my customers they started calling it Shell Shake Shack. That's really not the name of it, um, but it's it's it has like a, a catchy you know tone to it. Yeah, uh, Shell Shake Shack. So I just kind of went with that. Yeah. Um, but I want to open up another one. I'm thinking maybe like White Plains. Um, definitely in Manhattan somewhere. Yeah, I just want to branch off everywhere. Maybe even Delaware is like a really good spot to um to start a business. Um, no taxes or anything. So where's the where's the like, ten years from now? Where where are we sitting out? Ten we, years uh, from now, I would like to have about four more event spaces. Yeah. Event queen, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I want to be that woman that you can go to, like, oh, you know what? Call shells, call shells. She has yeah. spots, and yeah, I want everybody to just know, like. You would come here. I'm catering to all types of events. Well, not all type of events, not no crazy shit, but yeah. um, pretty much most events. And um, yeah, I want to get it done. I want to cater to my customers. I want everyone to have a good time. Um, safety first, of course. I want to make sure everyone is safe and um, just provide a, a stable environment, good environment where they can have a good time. What about like kids and husbands? Oh yeah, for sure. I've had kids parties here. No, but I'm saying for you, like kids, husbands. Oh, so I don't have any kids, and I'm not married. Oh okay. Yeah. You hear that? <laughs> uh, hear that? Well, let me just explain. So I am divorced. Um, oh okay. I was married, and um, yeah. Hopefully, I get back out there soon. You yeah. know, um, no more back. Focus on business. Yeah, right and that's my main concern. Yeah. I just you know getting the business together. I mean, whoever comes in, you know, that there's a lot going on here. So yeah. you got to make sure you bring something to the table. <laughs> so is there anything else you want to tell the people before we get out where they can find you? Uh, definitely. Uh, you can hit me on Instagram, uh, Shells the Goat. Um, if you're looking for the event space, you can hit my IG at Shell Shake Shack. Um, that's my ID for the event space. Or you can hit me at, at my email, njw914 at gmail.com. Everything will be linked in the description. Thank you for sending that Thank for me. Thank you. I appreciate your time.